a conversation with them. Oh, hey, you know, what's your name? Oh, are you from Louisville? And just, you know, they're making small talk. And then Jason says this. He's like, hey, uh, uh, we got to get going here, but do you like barbecue? He was like, yes. I mean, th th I think the answer to that is always yes. Anyone not like barbecue? I'm sorry, maybe some people here, you know, I'll pray for you if you don't like barbecue. But, but he's like, yeah, I like barbecue. He's like, hey, we'll bring you back some. He was like, oh, okay, well, well, thanks. He was just kind of confused, and, and we left. We, we just, I mean, it, it didn't seem like a mission trip. When we were at the barbecue place, we just had barbecue. We, we had ice cream. And we came back, and Jason brought the barbecue. He, he got him you know, some, uh, some pulled pork, and you know, had some sides in it, and it was really good stuff. But he hands it to him, and the guy was like, oh my gosh, you really brought it back. He was like, yeah, this is for you. And, you know, later he tried it and he ate it and he was like, like, like you, you totally made my day. This is the nicest thing like anyone's ever done for me. I'm like, the nicest thing anyone's ever done for you. You know, it's just barbecue. And, and you know, Jason was, was being very, very uh, humble. He was like, oh, this is from the whole team. I was on my phone when this whole thing went down. So it wasn't really from me. But every time we walked by, he gave like each one of us a hug, you know? So he was so thankful, you know? And it was a little thing, you know? I mean, that guy, he's a part of a Christian mission. Did he need to hear about Jesus, you know? They got him a job, you know, which is great. And he's getting his life back on his feet. But Jason just, you know, just spontaneously found one way to bless this man. It doesn't always have to be an earth-shattering thing. Right? Mission doesn't always have to be like, oh my gosh, we changed your eternal destiny. But how do you know that those little things aren't changing eternal destiny? And I'll be honest that, you know, we, we see this, uh, uh, this phrase here um, where it says, walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. And for me, you know, when I saw that, you know, Jason talking to the stranger and blessing him, you know, I, I felt two things. I was like, wow, that's awesome. But I also felt a little guilty because I was on my phone, right? And I was like, I didn't make the best use of my time. And of course, I had a million excuses. Oh, the whole day we've been serving and I was tired and I need to check my email. I don't think I was checking my email. I think it was Pokemon Go or something. <laughs> um, not spiritual at all, no excuse. But, you know, brothers and sisters, is it bad to not be always paying attention to mission. I think sometimes you can hear messages like this and you feel so bad, you feel so guilty. You're like, hey, good for you that you guys went to Louisville. Oh, that's awesome, but I didn't go to Louisville, right? Oh, good for you that, or good for these ministries that they're doing all this stuff, but I'm not doing it. And we feel kind of bad, we feel kind of guilty. It's like, well, what am I doing? You know, I'm at school or I'm making money or whatever. And brothers and sisters, I have a question for you. Could you be doing all of that on mission. Could you be doing all of that on purpose, with a purpose? Maybe it's in your job, and there's someone that you have an opportunity to bless. Doesn't always have to be in, you know, encased in a lot of Christian knees, right? You know, you, you don't always have to share the gospel with them. Maybe the gospel can be in the way that you treat them, in your words. Maybe it will open a door, right? Paul was saying, pray for, look for opportunities to declare the mystery of Christ, right? I'm not telling you not to share the gospel, but I'm telling you, if you'd never love these people at all, you won't have any opportunity to share the gospel. You know what I'm saying? Because the world has seen that. People who share the gospel, who speak the gospel, who talk about Jesus but don't live like Jesus. And in Louisville, I mean, most people, they know about Jesus. Jesus is everywhere. Most people actually believe in Jesus. But what we saw was a glimpse of people who were trying really to live like Jesus. And I'll tell you that it's not just about what we are missing in terms of feeling bad or feeling like you're a failure, feeling like you're not measuring up. It's not a measuring stick as much as a joy. I think that's, that's what we all felt, is seeing these ministries. It wasn't like a chore. You know, we saw these people who were doing these things because they were passionate about it. 
I mean, dare I say, because it brought them joy to bless other people. You know? They understood something, that making the best use of our time, doing these things on mission, on purpose, to bless the nations, to bless people around you, to share the love of Christ, that is living with a purpose. You ever hear people say, what is the meaning of life? You know, they want to know, well, what is the meaning to all of this? I got to say that I think people who are living missionally don't really ask that question. They know what the meaning is. The meaning of life is to be a blessing to other people, is to live like Christ, is to build the kingdom of God. And, and brothers and sisters, I don't think we need to shy away from saying that that feels good. That's a fulfilling thing. That is what you were created for, right? Blessing someone else. You know, I think that when Jason gave that guy the barbecue and the guy gave him a hug and said it was the best day of his life, I don't think Jason was like, check, I guess I did that for the kingdom of God. Or he's like, oh, I guess I had to do that. I think it felt pretty good. I think that was pretty awesome. Brothers and sisters, so, you know, there was something that in the devotionals uh, that they were talking about, they were talking about this concept of sleepwalking. That, that a lot of us, we kind of sleepwalk through life. And actually, this is just a feature of how the human mind works. You cannot pay attention to everything, right? You just can't. It would be sensory overload, right? Like, how many times did you notice that you were breathing? How many times did you notice that, um, that my shirt was white? Or, you know, did you notice the temperature? You can't pay attention to everything. You're supposed to tune things out. Otherwise, your mind would be flooded, right? Your senses would be flooded. You are supposed to tune things out. But at the same time, as we start to understand what we are being called to do, maybe we can start paying attention to the things that are important, right? And I think that is one of the things that is very important for us in life. You ever go through life and you realize that you missed out on something important. Have you ever, you know, maybe met someone later, I don't know, like future spouse or, you know, somebody that was going to become your best friend, and you realize that you actually met them before? You met them before, but you weren't paying attention. It's not really your fault. That's just kind of what we do. That's just what our minds do. We tune out things that we don't think is important. And we didn't realize that person was actually very important. That person would become everything in my life if I only knew. Maybe I would have had more time with that person. But we weren't able to see it then, right? What potentially are we missing out on, the blessings that we are missing out on, because we are sleepwalking, because our eyes aren't open? Brothers and sisters, how about this? As we close, I just want you to think about one thing. You know, maybe it's your family, maybe it's your school, maybe it's your work. Or how about this? Just right here at church. Just right here at church. We have. We're trying to get you guys to come uh, 30 minutes before service starts. And we're trying to entice you with coffee and with good snacks. We play some music in the background. Why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? Is it because Steve doesn't want to go out and get his own coffee? Maybe. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe. That crossed my mind. Just kidding. I could get coffee somewhere else, right? Um, you know, is it because we like donuts? I mean, sometimes, we, you know, so maybe some of you are like, I'm not coming at 1030 because I don't like donuts, you know? Brothers and sisters, that's not the point, right? We're doing it on purpose. There's a mission behind what we are doing. We are trying to give us an opportunity to be the church to each other, to give you an opportunity to bless another person, right? Maybe the next week you come, you come at 1030, and you look for somebody to bless. You just want to just, you know, go up to them and smile. Give them a hug. Ask them how their week is doing. You know, I don't know. Maybe even be so bold, right? Like, you're in a sanctuary. Maybe actually pray for them. Does that sound crazy? What does it mean to live on mission, to live on purpose? Maybe when we go down to eat lunch, and maybe for some of us, we actually don't stay for lunch because it's kind of intimidating or whatever. But maybe you have an opportunity to come and stay 
and be a part of community, to talk to someone, to bless them. Maybe, maybe you sit with someone different than you normally sit with. You talk to someone you haven't talked to, right? Because this is the thing. We fall into patterns. That's what humans do, right? It, it, it's comfortable, right? We, we fall into patterns, and our patterns tune out some information, pay attention to others. We look for friends. We look for comfort. We look for the things we've always done, and we just fall into that groove. But as we are becoming the people of God, Brothers and sisters, we can't do that. We have to live on mission. We have to live on purpose. We have to make the best, the most of the days that have been given to us, right? That our conversation should be sprinkled with grace. That we should be thinking about how we can bless other people. We should be looking for opportunities to share the love of Christ. And that, brothers and sisters, is a joy, right? There's some people who were kidding around. Um, some people had been on their first mission trip. Um, and, and we didn't really know what to expect you know, on this trip. And uh, someone was joking around. They're like, I I'm not going on any more mission trips. I'm like, what? I thought you had an awesome experience. And they're like, yeah, this has been the best. And that's the problem. I feel like I can't beat this experience. It was just like, you know, I just want to preserve this. You know? I went, on, went to Louisville, and that was the best. You can't beat it. But brothers and sisters, I really believe that everything we did in Louisville, you can do here. You can have that experience here. What if we start dreaming about your job, about your career? I mean, you know, the cupcakes and even the restaurant, they charge money. You know, people make a living. Some, some do. So they do get some donations from churches. I don't want to lie. But at the same time, you know, there are people who are able to make a living. You know, Forrest, uh, he renovates some of these homes and stuff, and, you know, he does that to help support his ministry so that he can serve at Crossroads, you know? And so I'm not saying don't make money. It doesn't have to be one or the other, but what if your whole life could be a mission? What if we could start to dream that what we do can actually meet some of the needs of this world, some of the brokenness that you see around you? Maybe there's a passion, you know, the lady who had a passion for horses, and saw hurting children. There's these youth, you know, uh, uh, some of them come from very troubled homes, or some of them have uh, some mental disorders or eating disorders and different kinds of things, and they bring them to this ranch, and they get healed by their relationship with these horses. I mean, this was a woman who loved horses. This was a woman who saw brokenness in her own life. And she's like, you know, she, she was older. She was retired. This is just what she does now. And she's like, you know what? I want to do that. I, I, I think that is a place where I can see God's mission. What about you? Maybe we can just pray about that. You know, Maybe we can just start to dream a little. Keep your eyes open. You don't have to answer that question now. But maybe every day and every moment, there are little opportunities, not always big ones, but little opportunities for you to live on mission. Uh, praise team, could you come up? Why don't we pray together? And, and just give you a moment. Uh, you don't have to, you know, maybe there's some way that God has been speaking to you in this message and you want to continue that prayer. Maybe you just want to let some of these things just settle in. Uh, I, I know, you know, we have some youth, we have some younger folks, we have junior high, high school. You know, and maybe this doesn't seem relevant to you because you're not really thinking about, you know, your career or, or, you know, how you're going to make money right now. You're just thinking about, you know, <laughs> what you're going to do this afternoon or, you know, I, I, I was, was that age too. I still think about these things. You're thinking about Fortnite or <laughs> whatever. But brothers and sisters, maybe even for you, but I suggest even you through Christ can do greater things. Did you know you could bless someone too? Did you know junior high, high school, by talking to someone else and you know maybe just being kind to them you could be a blessing did you know that that could be your mission yeah i've seen some of you you, you take a, a new kid and you show them around you're like hey come with me come eat with me that's mission it's beautiful that's living on purpose that that's an important thing you are sharing the love of christ right so maybe just uh let's just take a moment to just let this message breathe and maybe to just pray, God, give me eyes to see. 
that's not necessarily something you need to feel guilty about, but the idea that maybe we are missing out on blessing, on joy, on purpose, on meaning. Maybe there are some people you could bless today. Maybe there's some ways that you can serve. That you can be for God's people. You can be for the nations. You can be for, for the world. And not even leave Ann Arbor. <laughs> not even leave uh, your neighborhood. But you could do it right here and now. Oh God, I pray that gathered here, your children, will not just sleepwalk through life, not just go through the motions, just do what we've always done, take the path of least resistance, God, but that you will give us eyes to see where we can serve, where there is brokenness, where there is hurting, where there is need, God, for your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us eyes to see and give us, God, the willingness to be able to act on those things. Whether it be a dream for our future job or whether it be a conversation, a way to bless someone right here and right now. God, we thank you, Lord, that you give us these opportunities to be involved in mission. God, we thank you, Lord, that we get to be a blessing because it is a blessing to be a blessing. God, we thank you for all the things that you've shown us in Louisville and all the things that you will continue to show us here at LGM and uh, in Ann Arbor and in Michigan and beyond. God, we want to partner with you. Lord, we want to say, God, we are here. Send us. Show us where to go. May we just be obedient, God, to what you call us to each and every moment our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys rise for worship.